All right, so this is the CR10SE, and then you guys can see it looks really good here on the table. So let's go ahead and start here on the top. We have this pull holder. Not too sure why it has two holders as we can only utilize one and I don't think you want to put too much weight on here while printing anyway so yeah seems a little redundant here but it does come with two holders we got the filament detector here there is a light bar on the front very nice the only thing is you want to be careful not to accidentally grab it and break it off we do have a separate on and off switch for it and it's definitely a very nice addition here to this printer going down from there we can see our hot end extruder assembly and this is all in one direct drive we got the cable here coming in you can see the strain relief and it plugs in right there we can see the all metal extruder it is sprite got a little fan there with the venting and on this side we can see our CR touch for leveling and we have a pretty nice fascia design here also with some vents there for cooling and a Creality logo so there are a couple of screws that hold the cover which I took out so we can slide it off and see a little closer and there we can see the parts cooling fan with the duct very nice I'll go ahead and unplug this fan and we can see there's a separate junction board that's almost like a separate board that does its own functions and I think all it does is get signals from the main board and then there does the rest of the thinking here there's our sprite extruder very nice all metal we can see our stepper motor there in the back and then we got our heat brake there with the heat brake fan right beside it again our CR touch is here and then we have a ceramic heat block with a silicone sock around it and this is the same one looks like that they use on the K1 so yeah these are all really high-end parts for fast speed printing and as you guys can see we are running on linear rail for the X and what's interesting is that there are no end stop switches for the X or the Y as I think it uses a sensing kind of mechanism where when it buds against the end stop here that's where it knows where the end is so yeah very nice hot end I'm gonna go ahead and put this back and let's look at the rest of the printer all right so looking here from the back our dual Z axes are tethered with this belt here's our wiring for the filament detector it goes through the channel and then down and also from the light bar here all the way to our junction box there are bearings in here that hold the lead screws and you guys can see how the belts connected there between the two going down we have this little clip here that installs and it just holds the wire here from falling down and by the way this is what that looks like from the back there you can see the motor the strain relief here and kind of the view under here from the back so here we have the X axis motor and that's where it connects underneath we got the V slot rollers for each side everything is metal and these are our couplers here with dual motors our bed here has very nice strain relief it is aluminum and also insulated and we can see the frame there it's pretty beefy there are no knobs to adjust so everything is automatic we are also running on the Y axis on a linear rail that's wider and we also kind of have the same end stops here where it just butts against our belt here to our Y axis motor which is pretty large and there we can see the belt with the pulley so the bed wire goes here into the base we got the main wire here that comes out the side and it is a little funky on mine like it's not been assembled correctly or there's some wires poking out of it but a little bit rough looking but not terrible and so yeah the base is quite low profile and if we go to the very back in the center here we can see we have a voltage selector under there with a sticker that we need to peel to change it so I can see that mine is set to 230 and we need to change that to 115 so you want to absolutely do that before you try to power on the printer We'll grab the included flat screwdriver and go this way for 115. All right, so I just put my sticker back on. So yeah, and if we go to this side, we can see this is where our power input port is and it is fused. And going from there to this end, we can see we've got our on and off switch. And then our manufacturing label shows us a little more detail about the printer. And on top of there, we can see here our little junction box and this is where you plug in the Z, the light bar and the filament detector. And going up from here we can see kind of the X axis mechanism there where the belt runs and to adjust it you use this Allen bolt here to tighten the belt. Going back to the front we can see our build plate and it is 220 by 220 and I believe 265 tall we can print which is a very nice print volume. We have a flexible PEI sheet that comes off it's pretty thin it's coated on one side and reflective on the other this is our magnetic mat which the plate magnetizes to I do love that it has the little bolts for the end stop for connecting it quick there's no guessing of where it goes you just butt it against and put it down and again you guys can see there the frame no adjustable so yeah and we're also insulated you can maybe see a little better there linear rails there's actually two bearings and all the way in the front here this is our tension adjuster for the Y belt so this is what the front looks like very nice we do have a very large tray 
that opens up and you guys can see I put most of the stuff in here and it is huge you guys and fits a lot of things which is pretty incredible to see for a smaller printer to have such a big tray so not too much going on on this side but on the other side here we have the screen which here we have a sticker that reminds us to check the voltage which we have done already let's go ahead and peel off the protector so the screen is not made to be moved it's kind of stationary but it doesn't unclip if you need to you know kind of take it off yeah it's a pretty decent screen the bezels are a little large but not bad and obviously it is a touch screen and what's pretty unique is that we have the usb ports here right on the screen itself instead of the printer so yeah and you guys can see there how it connects and mounts to the side there so yeah this is a pretty interesting printer and what's unique about it is how they've put parts from the k1 into this bed slinger style i3 printer offering us high speed printing in a more budget friendly and more of a normal format that we're used to